Live from ABC7, this is Eyewitness News at 7 p.m. on LA56. A newborn baby girl found alone on a Lakewood lawn. What we're learning about the child and the woman believed to be her mother. An eyewitness is speaking out about the deadly crash in Malibu involving reality star Bruce Jenner. And a high-speed pursuit on the high seas. Watch as the Coast Guard chases a group of fishermen. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jory Rand. I'm Giovanna Lotta. Welcome to Eyewitness News on LA 56, LA's only live local newscast at 7 p.m. A baby girl, possibly just hours old, found abandoned in Lakewood. Eyewitness News reporter Leanne Souter has more on the Good Samaritan who found the baby and on the woman believed to be the mother. A shocking discovery behind this brick wall in Lakewood as a newborn baby girl, just hours old, is found lying on the grass. Was a uh... Awakened by uh, someone saying, hey, you never guess what I got. And I go, what do you have? And they, they showed it to me, and it was a baby. It freaked us out. Investigators say the mystery woman gave birth right on the grass where the baby was found, at the corner of Lakewood Boulevard and Hardwick Street. According to detectives, a homeless man passing by on his bike around 6 a.m. heard the baby's cries and stopped to investigate. Stunned by his find, he picked up the infant who was wrapped in a thin blue blanket and yelled for his friends. Just born. Hours. Had everything still on it. Yeah. And I thought, wow. I go, man, it's just, somebody just had this baby. The Good Samaritan rushed the baby to a nearby fire station. Paramedics treated her before taking her to the hospital. Detectives say during their investigation, a 35-year-old woman approached them saying she had helped deliver the baby. Authorities noticed the woman was bleeding. She was taken to the hospital where it was confirmed she had recently given birth. She is believed to be the baby's mother. DNA test will confirm. Detectives say they're just grateful the Good Samaritan spotted the child when he did. I have talked to him. He heard something. He heard a baby and did the right thing was to stop and to check out what he heard and to his finding. I mean, he is, uh, he possibly saved this baby's life. The case will now be turned over to the DA to determine if charges will be filed. Authorities want to remind the public that under the state's safe surrender law, a newborn can be left within 72 hours at any safe surrender site, like a hospital or fire station. No questions asked. In Lakewood, Leanne Suter, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Leanne, thanks. The wind and rain is finally dying down in Northern California, but the storm leaves behind a lot of damage. In Guerneville, a giant redwood crashed into two summer homes. And earlier today, the storm brought wind gusts up to 45 miles an hour and another two inches of rain to coastal communities. We've also had a few showers here in Southern California this weekend. Danny Romero is here to tell us whether we can expect any more rain on the way. Danny. All right, thanks very much, Jory and Giovanna. Looking on a, a live Mega Doppler 7000 HD here on a Sunday, we can see there is some rain to the north. Now, what's going on right now is kind of lighter rain at the moment. It's scattered in nature, similar to what we had before, but it is tracking towards Southern California, so we're still keeping the chance of some showers tonight into tomorrow for this to track down to us here in Southern California. In the meantime, things look pretty nice over the area. We've got our live HD camera to LAX, so the coast has some clouds building in already, and the temps are now starting to cool down somewhat here on a Sunday night. 62 in Riverside, 67 for Fullerton right now. Santa Ana checks in at 68 degrees. Still pretty warm in the desert, 77 in Palm Springs, and the coastal spots, like we just showed you, clouds at 65 in Long Beach, 62 in Santa Monica, Oxnard at 64 degrees. But there are yet more changes coming. I'll tell you about that with a seven-day forecast in just a little bit. Jory and Jovan, right now, all yours. Danny, thank you. We are learning more about that deadly crash in Malibu involving reality star Bruce Jenner. Deputies have identified the woman killed in the accident as 69-year-old Kim Howe of Calabasas. Eyewitness News reporter Melissa McBride has the latest on the investigation. 69-year-old Kim Howe of Calabasas was killed on Saturday when her Lexus veered into the southbound lanes of PCH and was hit by a Hummer. The deadly head-on collision happened moments after Howe was part of a chain reaction crash that involved Bruce Jenner and the driver of a Prius. Deputies on the scene contacted the driver of the Prius. Uh, she made statements that she uh, slowed or stopped. Uh, we're not sure if she was slowing for traffic at the signal that was uh, down the, the street a little way, or if she was stopping or slowing for another reason. Howe's Lexus rear-ended the Prius. Jenner's Cadillac Escalade hit the Lexus before it was struck by the Hummer. The accident investigation shut down PCH for nine hours. We were approximately 600 feet behind when it, when it happened. 
We weren't, we weren't quite sure what cars were involved because we couldn't see because of the traffic. Deputies say Jenner was on his way home after picking up his four-wheel drive vehicle from a friend. He says paparazzi were following him, but that was not a factor in the crash. Investigators will likely look at the driver's cell phone records to see if anyone was texting when the accident happened. Even with cell phone records, it's sometimes difficult to determine if uh, they were in use at the exact time of the collision because we can't pinpoint down the collision to an exact time usually. People who live near the crash site say there have been other accidents near the intersection of PCH and Corral Canyon where many drivers are going 45 miles per hour or faster. The new light that's down there, they have a warning for it, but I think it's too close to the light. By the time people see a light that's warning them there's an intersection, they're already at the intersection. The Sheriff's Department says Bruce Jenner turned his vehicle slightly to the right and tried to avoid hitting the Lexus. Investigators have not yet determined who was at fault or if any of the drivers will face criminal charges. Reporting at the Sheriff's Station in Agora Hills, I'm Melissa McBride, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Melissa, thank you. And Bruce Jenner has just released a statement saying in part, quote, my heartfelt and deepest sympathies go out to the family and loved ones and to all of those who were involved or injured in this terrible accident. It is a devastating tragedy and I cannot pretend to imagine what this family is going through at this time. I am praying for them. In Canyon Country, a woman is now in custody after allegedly shooting her brother and her father. The deadly shooting happened early this morning in an apartment on Danielson Street. Both men were shot in the head. The brother died at the hospital. The father is expected to survive. Investigators say it all began with a domestic dispute. As far as we know, it looks like they all lived together in the same apartment. Uh, she surrendered to deputies when they arrived on the scene, um, and, uh, which was taken into custody without incident. So in the process now, interviewing her and the surviving victims and witnesses and trying to determine exactly what happened. The murder weapon, a semi-automatic handgun, was recovered at the location. The 25-year-old suspect was booked at Santa Clarita Sheriff's Station for murder. Also in Canyon Country, two young men were killed when their car flew off an embankment. It happened early this morning near Sierra Highway and Soledad Canyon Road. The Camaro went off the side of the road and down in a 50-foot embankment. The driver, identified a, as a 19-year-old from Acton, was ejected. His passenger, a 21-year-old from Acton, was trapped in the car, which caught fire. Both were pronounced dead at the scene. A man is dead following a fight at a fast food restaurant in downtown L.A. It happened last night outside of the Burger King on Grand and Cesar Chavez. Police say an altercation broke out and one person wound up dead. Two others were taken into custody. No word yet on what sparked the fight. Rap mogul Suge Knight is due back in court tomorrow to face murder charges in the death of Terry Carter. Yesterday, Carter's family and friends gathered for his funeral in South Los Angeles. The 55-year-old Carter was killed following an argument on the set of the movie Straight Outta Compton. Despite the fact that Knight's attorney told Eyewitness News the day after the incident that Knight and Carter were friends, Carter's family says that was not the case. But Knight's attorney maintains his client was being attacked when he fatally hit Carter with his pickup truck and injured another man. A dance teacher in the Inland Empire has been arrested for having an inappropriate relationship with a 13-year-old. Investigators say 22-year-old Thomas Cook is a dance instructor at Dance Dynamics in Hesperia and also teaches at a dance studio in Upland. He travels regularly to dance competitions and conventions and investigators believe there may be more victims out there. Cook was booked on suspicion of lewd and lascivious acts with a child and is being held on $350,000 bail. Gunshots ring out at a Pennsylvania mall. Today, three people are in the hospital, and the teenage gunman is behind bars thanks to social media. ABC's Bazi Kanani has the latest. A packed shopping mall turned shooting range. Shots rang out. People started running. Gunfire broke out inside the Macy store around 7.30 Saturday night. Shoppers scrambling for cover. I grabbed my children, my husband. We started screaming, go, go, go. Just outside the store at a popular play area, the chaos and panic separated families. 
There was another little boy. He's like, I can't find my mommy. I can't find my mommy. I grabbed him, too. As police descended surrounding the building, the gunman escaped, but not for long. Authorities caught up with Terod Thornhill overnight and arrested him. The 17-year-old appeared before a judge on Sunday facing several charges, including attempted homicide. Police found Thornhill by using Instagram. The suspect posted a picture just hours before the shooting, wearing the same outfit seen on store surveillance cameras. Within the first hour, we knew who this kid was. And it was done through video surveillance, which was very good. Detectives say the surveillance footage shows Thornhill with a group of teens. He approaches a 20-year-old man, exchanges words, then draws a gun. As he opens fire, a husband and wife are walking between the accused shooter and his target. Their young son just steps behind them. Doctors say all three victims are expected to survive. Police are not yet commenting on a possible motive for the shooting. They are now planning to increase their presence at the mall. And on Friday and Saturday nights, teenagers will now be required to have an adult escort. Bazi Kanani, ABC News, Monroeville, Pennsylvania. And police have identified the gunman who killed himself after killing four people in a quiet neighborhood outside Atlanta. 33-year-old Cedric Prather died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound after shooting and killing his ex-wife, another adult, and two children yesterday afternoon. Two other children were also injured. Neighbors say they saw the shootings and they tried to help the victims before ambulances arrived. Police say a man claiming to have a bomb in his truck crashed through the gates of a Grand Haven, Michigan Coast Guard station early this morning. He reportedly got out of his truck and began assaulting workers there, some suffering minor injuries. That man was subdued and arrested. Officials say no explosives were found. The area around the station was blocked off during the investigation. The incident is being investigated as a case of domestic terrorism. In a high-speed pursuit on the high seas, the U.S. Coast Guard posted this video on YouTube of a cutter chasing down a Mexican fishing boat spotted fishing illegally in U.S. waters off South Padre Island in Texas. The cutter intercepted the fishing boat, which then began taking on water. The Coast Guard rescued four men from the sinking boat, then turned them over to Customs, Customs and Border Protection to be sent back to Mexico. Coming up on Eyewitness News, actor George Clooney's wife is now working to free an Al Jazeera journalist in Egypt. We have the details on what she's doing. And an ugly scene erupts at an Egyptian soccer match. The details straight ahead. Plus, controversy surrounding legendary Arthur Harper Lee and her recently recovered sequel to To Kill a Mockingbird. What the author has to say.
A massive riot at a soccer game in Egypt. At least 25 people have been killed. It all happened at a stadium suburb east of Cairo. The fighting broke out between police and fans, which then led to a stampede. Security officials say people were killed in both the riot and the ensuing stampede. It's unclear at this point what led up to the violence, but Egypt's hardcore soccer fans, known as ultras, frequently clash with police inside and outside of stadiums. They are deeply politicized, and many participated in the country's 2011 uprising that forced out President Hosni Mubarak. Secretary of State John Kerry says the U.S. and its European allies are united on how to handle the crisis in Ukraine. Kerry met with his French and German counterparts during the final day of the Munich Security Conference in Germany. His statement followed reports of a disagreement among the nations over arming Ukraine. U.S. officials say President Obama is rethinking his previous opposition to sending arms to Ukraine. Germany and France oppose such a move, saying it could lead to an ex escalation. We all agree that this challenge will not end through military force. We are united in our diplomacy. But the longer that it takes, the more the off-ramps are avoided, the more we will be forced to raise the costs on Russia and its proxies. Russia is accused of supporting separatist rebels in eastern Ukraine. A summit among the leaders of Germany, France, Russia and Ukraine is planned for Wednesday in an effort to solve the crisis. Amal Clooney is pushing to free an Al Jazeera journalist in Egypt. The international human rights lawyer will go to Egypt to work on the case of jailed cameraman Mohamed Fami. He is one of three Al Jazeera journalists arrested in Cairo in December 2013. Correspondent Peter Greste was freed last week, but Fami and producer Bahir Mohammed remain in detention. Fami has been granted a retrial, which begins February 12th. All right, on to the weather. Yep. Just really beautiful. Really is. perfection. You know, you're going to get a little differentiation from that. We're yeah. A little slide sideways on it for a day. Yeah. But then, Some clouds. I know you like the sunny weather. I do. <laughs> Everyone gets some very sunny weather. I mean, like, how does 80 at the beach sound to you? Sounds good. I knew you should We'll take it. it. <laughs> Let's go outside, take a look right now. See how our Sunday is shaping up. Not a bad one. We swing our live camera out to our Irvine Spectrum location, and there, Orange County under some uh, partly cloudy skies right now. Uh, heading towards a cloudier evening, certainly, over the area. Now we swing the camera out here, and it's a live HD look to Burbank in the valley. Partly clear there as well. Clouds moving in through the nighttime hours. Our downtown LA skyline looks fairly clear right now, but clouds are certainly on the way. 64 degrees right now. Just barely a breeze of three miles per hour with our relative humidity at 81%. And look at this. The clouds moving through a little time-lapse action at Angeles National Forest today. We can see that as the sun starts to set, those clouds just constantly moving through the area, heading towards Southern California with some moisture and a chance of showers. Right now, the main energy is up towards our north. It's a low that's tracking towards the east, but that bottom edge starting to track towards us a little bit. We could get some shower action out of this overnight tonight into tomorrow. Mountain areas could see some more on Tuesday as well, but then the real change in our weather will be a ridge of high pressure that builds in to the area, bringing us an offshore flow, which means much warmer weather. Also, some winds that could gust in that 40, 50 mile per hour range. So certainly something to watch for over the next few days, but get ready to bust out the sunscreen. We're gonna need it here before the week is done. Numbers tonight, down to the 50s in San Bernardino, Ontario and Pasadena. 40s for Lancaster, Palmdale, 39 for Fraser Park. Tomorrow's afternoon high, sunshine coming later in the day, enough to get to 72 for Santa Clarita, 74 for Pasadena, but the beaches, not so lucky. Cloudy and cooler there, 67 for Huntington Beach, 64 for Dana Point. We look ahead now. Seven-day power back. You weather, watch these changes. Chance of showers tomorrow. And then Tuesday, the warming starts up and really jumps up to 82. To 85, the warmest day on Thursday for LA Metro and Orange County, and still in the 80s into next weekend. For the valleys and the Inland Empire, that shower chance tomorrow, and then the things change on Tuesday. 80s for the highs, topping off at 86, the warmest day on Friday for the valleys and the Inland Empire, still in the 80s next Saturday and Sunday. Beaches, shower chances tomorrow, and then there too, beaches, not out of the question here, to start warming up on Tuesday to Wednesday, 71 to 78. And then 80 degrees, the warmest beach day Thursday, right there. I could almost hear those 
call in sick things happening right now. And then the weekend still, look at that, mid to upper 70s for the highs on the coast for Saturday and Sunday. Mountain spots have that shower chances Monday and Tuesday, and they're too clearing out by midweek. And then the winds, those strong gusts, 40, 50 miles per hour, and the temps, not bad during the days, mid to upper 50s, but overnight, cold in the 30s and 20s for the high desert, partly cloudy skies, clearing out more so on Tuesday, but those winds, pretty strong. 40, 50 mile per hour gust blowing, but those numbers there too, slowly warming up from 67 on Monday up to 72 and 74 heading into next weekend. So a lot of sunshine yeah. on the way. All right. Hey, okay. sunscreen. That's, that's right. Yeah. Thanks, Danny, Danny. thanks. Okay. Another woman has come forward accusing comedian Bill Cosby of making unwanted sexual advances. Former fashion model and actress Helen Gumpel, formerly known as Helen Selby, says Cosby gave her a drink and made sexual advances and lewd gestures towards her on the set of The Cosby Show. Cosby faces sexual assault accusations from at least 15 women. He has denied the allegations and has never been charged with a crime. But today, Cosby canceled back-to-back -back shows in Boston. Her new novel is already topping bestseller lists and stirring up controversy months before its release. There are questions concerning the sequel to To Kill a Mockingbird. Was 88-year-old author Harper Lee part of the decision to publish the decades-old manuscript? Here's ABC's David Wright. You never really understand a person until you consider things from his point of view. For a beloved story about a young girl's coming of age, a new chapter 55 years later. Where are you going? Time to read Atticus. To Kill a Mockingbird, the book that inspired that movie, was the only one Harper Lee ever published. Now Harper Collins is getting set to publish a sequel, Go Set a Watchman. Now some people from Lee's hometown, Monroeville, Alabama, say they believe the author didn't want to publish a second book in her lifetime. After suffering a stroke in 2007, some feel 88-year-old Lee may be unable to object. It's just wrong for somebody to take advantage of an elderly person. Others dispute that. I'm really tired of the misrepresentation, and I'm with her once a month. And she is not diminished. This week, the publisher tweeted a message supposedly from Lee. I'm alive and kicking and happy as hell at the reactions to Watchmen. The manuscript, which publishers say was discovered in a secure location, along with the original manuscript for To Kill a Mockingbird, is actually Lee's first novel. Portions of it were adapted to become the story of Scout and Atticus Finch. Even before it's out, it's already number one on Amazon. Does Jean Louis stand up? Your father's passing. But why has it taken so long? That's a mystery. The author, like Boo Radley, off in the shadows. David Wright, ABC News, New York. Big mystery, but I can't wait to read it. I know. Book. I'm going to have to get the book. Yeah, no doubt. Saying I do all over again. Dozens of couples renew their wedding vows in downtown L.A. as they take part in a special World Ma Marriage Day Mass. And instead of citing a shoplifter at a grocery store, one officer returned the offense with kindness. We'll explain when we come back. But first, do you have a question for Mayor Eric Garcetti? He'll be our guest on an upcoming edition of Eyewitness Newsmakers. You can submit your question at abc7.com, and he could answer it on the show.
More than 100 couples gathered at Cathedral of Our Lady of the Angels in downtown Los Angeles, all to renew their wedding vows. Take a look. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad. Archbishop Jose Gomez presided over the ceremony. Today is known as World Marriage Day, which is held every year on the Sunday before Valentine's Day. The longest married couple in the audience was celebrating their 68th anniversary. Wow, Giovanna, will you continue to be my co-anchor? Mm -hmm. Through good reasons, bad. For the next bad, 67 years. Through hiccups and mistakes. <laughs> A happy man. Uh, instead of citing a shoplifter at a grocery store, a police officer in London, Kentucky, shows his compassionate side. Officer Justin Roby says he quickly realized the man he was detaining was in a pretty difficult situation. That suspect, a single father, had been caught stealing baby formula from a Kroger's after falling on hard times. Instead of citing the man, the officer paid for the formula with his own money. Me citing him for court wouldn't have done any good for him. He's already short on money, can't afford formula, so me, me making him appear in court, he's still not going to have any food for that baby. Good man. The officer says there's nothing special about what he did, that police perform selfless acts every day, but I'm sure there are many out there who would beg to differ. That was pretty special. And he deserves props, no, Absolutely. no matter what. We're updating our top stories at 7.30, including the latest on a newborn baby found abandoned in Lakewood. And chaos erupts outside a Hollywood nightclub as a man is shot and killed right along the boulevard. Plus, firefighters gain the upper hand on a blaze raging in Central California. And eight UCLA students are back safe tonight after being rescued from the Angeles National Forest. The detail ahead.
Live from ABC7, this is Eyewitness News at 7.30 p.m. on LA56. Our top story at 7.30, a newborn baby girl, possibly just hours old, found in Lakewood. I'm Giovanna Lotta. I'm Jory Rand. This is Eyewitness News on LA56. LA's only live local newscast at 7.30 p.m. A homeless man heard the baby crying, took it, and rushed it to a nearby fire station. That baby was then taken to the hospital. Meanwhile, investigators believe a woman who approached them saying she had helped deliver the baby may in fact be the baby's mother. That woman denied it, but she was taken to the hospital where a doctor determined she had just given birth. DNA tests are pending. The investigation is ongoing. The investigation continues into the deadly crash in Malibu involving Bruce Jenner that killed a 69-year-old woman identified as Kim Howe of Calabasas. Authorities will likely collect phone records for all four drivers involved to cross-check call and text data. The big remaining question is what led the driver of the Prius to suddenly put on the brakes, initiating the chain reaction? Jenner, who wasn't injured and passed a field sobriety test, told deputies that paparazzi had been following him on PCH, but that did not play a role in the accident. Chaos erupts outside a Hollywood nightclub as a man is shot and killed. It all happened at Hollywood Boulevard and Las Palmas. The alleged gunman has been arrested, and as Eyewitness News reporter Darsha Phillips tells us, many fear this popular spot in Hollywood is now becoming more violent. Hollywood is a popular tourist destination, known for its attractions, its shopping, and of course, its stars. But according to many, violent crime all too often is also making an unwanted appearance in Tinseltown. All of a sudden we heard like five or six shots and uh, it was just basically like a stampede of people just trying to run and drive away. Miles Sam and his wife were visiting from Houston and were inside a nightclub when they heard several shots about 1145 Saturday night. A man gunned down in the busy intersection of Las Palmas and Hollywood Boulevard. The suspected shooter, a gang member, 23-year-old Michael Vincent Carter, was arrested and booked for murder. One local employee, too scared to show his face on camera, described the chaos. The first thing I did was I shoved people out of my doorway and told everybody to get inside, get down, get down, get down. Many people who work in the area say the violence is getting out of hand, making Hollywood more gut-wrenching than glamorous. I'm seeing the situation spiral out of control. Tamur Reed runs a tourist company and says the violence is affecting business. I don't expect business to be any better as more incidents like that occur. There have been several shootings and stabbings in Hollywood in recent months, and many tourists say this isn't the Hollywood they were expecting. We're also kind of watching it back a little bit because we have heard of a couple of incidences, especially on this area. Local business owners want more patrols and a crackdown on crime, something they say is now all too commonplace in a town once known for glitz and glimmer. I hope nothing bad happens to me, but God forbid it does, it would not be a shock. In Hollywood, I'm Darsha Phillips, ABC7 Eyewitness News. A worker at the Anheuser-Busch Brewery in Van Nuys is badly burned after falling into a vat of hot mash. Officials say the 40-year-old man was trying to move along the top of the vat to a nearby truck when he somehow fell into the near-boiling mixture of water and grains. He was able to pull himself out and was rushed to a hospital. Paramedics say he suffered first and second degree burns to 30% of his body. Two wild police chases overnight in two separate incidents. They were separated by just about a half an hour. This one happened just after midnight. We're told a woman with several outstanding warrants led officers on a chase from San Bernardino to Los Alamitos. The pursuit ended about an hour later when the woman lost control and crashed into a ditch. She was then arrested and now faces charges. Now, just minutes before that last police chase, Los Angeles police pursued a man in a stolen vehicle. This one began around 11.30 last night in North Hollywood. This pursuit ended peacefully 30 minutes later at the intersection of Whittier Boulevard and Garfield Avenue in Montebello. That driver was taken into custody. Firefighters have gained the upper hand on a wind-driven wildfire that destroyed 40 homes and prompted evacuations in two towns at the eastern base of the Sierra Nevada. Rain moved in, allowing firefighters to make progress. The blaze is now 65% contained. About 250 people were forced to evacuate. 
Dozens of power poles have come down, making it too dangerous for people to be allowed back in. The fire has burned nearly 11 square miles. The cause is under investigation. Eight hikers are now safe after being rescued in the Angeles National Forest. The LA Sheriff's Department says they are UCLA students who are members of a hiking club. Those hikers had been missing since yesterday evening. Rescue crews didn't find them until about 12.30 this morning. The group was supposed to hike from South Mount Hawkins and return to Islip Saddle, but they never made it back. The hikers ended up walking all the way to the Little Jimmy campground, and it took rescuers six hours to then hike the students back out due to snow and icy conditions. Besides being a little cold, no one was hurt. Operations at the ports of L.A. and Long Beach are expected to resume tomorrow after a weekend shutdown. The Pacific Maritime Association ordered port workers to suspend ship loading and unloading activities this weekend at all West Coast ports. It's the latest in a labor dispute with dock workers. If a contract agreement isn't reached, a full shutdown of West Coast ports is possible. Time now to check your work week forecast. For that, we turn things over to Danny Romero. Danny. Right, thank you very much, Jory and Giovanna. We're looking at a pretty good day over Southern California with a lot of clear skies. But watch now. You go to the live mega dock for 7,000 HC. There is rain in our area once again to the north tracking somewhat towards the south. There's a movement moving to the south, but we can see it kind of pushing up a little bit. We could get the very edges of this once again. Very similar to what we had the last couple of days. Light rain, scattered rain through the area, but certainly tonight into tomorrow, we're going to watch for this to be part of our weather picture. Otherwise, the live shots give a pretty good view right now. Irvine Spectrum Live HD. Clear skies over this part of Orange County, also clear over downtown L.A., where today was a pretty good day. Once again, the average temp of 68 degrees. We got to 77 as our afternoon high today. Sunset at 530, sunrise 644. We're looking at a pretty good night tonight with some clouds moving in, but then the change is on the way. I'll tell you about that when I come back live. Mega Doppler 7000 HD 7-day forecast is on the way. Giovanna and Jory right now. It's all yours. Okay, Danny, thanks. Former Go uh, California Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger is calling for more to be done to combat climate change. He says it is the issue of our time. Schwarzenegger spoke today to a group at the Munich Security Conference where he introduced a new policy paper called The Future of Energy. Schwarzenegger said his experience in California was that the adoption of green energy creates jobs and leads to energy independence. I knew that California is one of the largest economies in the world. There's a tremendous power, power of influence, to influence other subnational governments and national governments around the world to do the same thing we do, to follow our footsteps. Because after all, it's called global warming and not California warming. Schwarzenegger says the issue should not be politicized and people should work together to find solutions. Ahead on Eyewitness News, his case was thrust into the spotlight after becoming the subject of the podcast, Serial. Now Adnan Syed and his team have won a motion to appeal his murder conviction. We have the latest development. And good news for Verizon customers, why your plan might be getting a little cheaper.
The subject of the popular public radio podcast, Serial, has been granted an appeal. Fifteen years ago, Adnan Syed was still a teen when he was convicted in the murder of his ex-girlfriend. Nick Valencia has the latest developments on his case. This is Serial, the most talked about podcast in 2014. And now the man at the heart of it is getting a new chance to overturn his conviction. On Friday, the Maryland Court of Appeals agreed to hear Adnan Syed's case, a decision based on the claim that Syed's original attorney failed to call a key witness who gave him an alibi. It's a huge victory for the 33-year-old. In 2000, he was convicted of murder in the death of his then ex-girlfriend, Heyman Lee. The last time 18-year-old Heyman Lee was seen alive, she was here at Woodlawn High School. This past Tuesday, she was finally found. A passerby in Leakin Park discovered her body, hastily buried in a shallow grave. Syed became a familiar name to millions around the world last year because of journalist Sarah Koenig, who focused her podcast on the 1999 Baltimore murder case. Something's not, doesn't make sense here in this case, and I don't know where the problem is. And so it really is just me trying to figure that out. The drama was downloaded a record-breaking 5 million times. But perhaps more importantly, it cast reasonable doubt among listeners that Syed might have been sentenced to life in prison for a crime he did not commit. You can take any one piece of it and say, well, that part didn't happen. But that doesn't mean the whole thing, the entire thing is corrupt. On Friday, Syed's attorney tweeted this. We will be heard by the Court of Special Appeals. It's another step in the direction of winning a new trial for Adnan. I would rather someone say, Adnan, I think you're a jerk, you're selfish, you're, you know, you're crazy SOB. You, may, you would sh just stay in there for the rest of your life, except that I looked at your case and it looks, you know, like a little off, you know, like something's not right. While Koenig's podcast may have drawn attention to the case, the wheels were in motion for an appeal well before the podcast debuted but now a significant step by the court that will give Serial's army of faithful followers a chance at solving the biggest mystery. Did Anand Syed really do it? That was Nick Valencia reporting. The Maryland Court of Appeals has ruled that it will hear arguments in defense of Adnan Syed beginning in June. It'll be interesting to see what they find Yeah, out. that case is now attracting the attention of a lot of people out there. Well, we saw some wet weather this weekend, but will we see any more this week? Danny Romero standing by with a look at your work week forecast. And hang ten. This guy can probably surf better than most humans. Maybe. More of this <laughs> awesome video when we come back. Better than I can. In sports, <laughs> the Clippers' playoff chances took a big hit today. Find out why next.
The fire volcano in Guatemala has sprung to life, spewing rock and ash over surrounding towns. The volcano is near the Pacific Ocean, about 60 miles from the capital, Guatemala City. It began erupting yesterday. So far, about 100 people have been ordered to evacuate. The smoke and ash also forced the closure of Guatemala's La Aurora International Airport. This is one of uh, Central America's most active volcanoes. It's also a popular tourist attraction. Well, we're not going to quite see that kind of heat no. around here, but it is going to get a little bit hot this week. That's right, yeah. No magma to be found anywhere. No, no liquid That's hot magma. That's a good magma. thing. We don't need Spewing it. or otherwise. Yeah. This is a weird word, spewing. Oh, my God, I said it again. <laughs> let's go outside <laughs> and see how things look here. First, let's check out the live Mega Doppler 7000 HD, and we can see there is light rain in the area. Oh, my gosh. But heading towards us here in Southern California. Now, it's scattered. It's light. Not a whole lot to this, but still something to watch tonight through the morning hours. It tracks slowly ever southward and a little bit on the eastward slope to it as well. One thing to do watch, I want you to watch for all the, the advisors in effect on the, Orange, on the uh, Ventura County coast and the L.A. County coast, a high surf advisory. These are pretty dangerous waves. We're talking anywhere from 6 to 10 foot waves. Some waves could be in that 15 foot range. Very, very dangerous. And of course, very strong and dangerous rip currents as well. There's going to be some great beach days coming up here through Tuesday at 4 p.m. I'd advise stay on the sand, enjoy the view, but not get in the water. Kind of dangerous. Here's a great murky look. The clouds are moving in. Our LAX camera showing you the clouds, that marine layer already on the coastal spots. That's what's on the way for us that could bring us a little bit of moisture before the night and morning hours are done. Downtown LA, clear skies there. 64 degrees our temperature, 81% relative humidity. Here's the changing part of our weather. There's that low that's tracking with the rain and all to our north. We're going to see this ridge of high pressure that's in place right now. Get us a very nice day today, right? That's going to be gone for a little bit. Tonight and tomorrow, it's going to break down somewhat. This moisture could come to us tonight and in the morning hours. But then just like that, by midweek, another high moves in and gives us warm temps, strong winds, and numbers you're going to love on the coast. Here's our numbers tonight. They're down to 55 in Ontario, 40, and right wood down to 54 in Thousand Oaks. Tomorrow's highs, cloudier. Drizzly on the coast, only 68 for Malibu, but inland a little more sunshine, so 74 in Pasadena. Covina, you're going to get to 73. Beaumont, only 69. Palm Springs, though, 84 degrees. Now we look ahead. Seven-day power back. Rather watch this. We see the numbers go 74 with a chance of showers tomorrow at LA Metro Orange County. And then it starts to warm things up. 77 to 82. We're not done yet. Thursday, the warmest day, 85, still 80s into the weekend. For the valleys in the Inland Empire, shower chances tomorrow. Then the temps rising up to the 80s on Tuesday and then staying there, bumping up ever so much more to 85 and 86 by Thursday and Friday. Still a sunny weekend in the 80s come Saturday and Sunday. Beaches starting out on the cloudier side, 68 chance of showers and then a little bit of warming on Tuesday. Look at this. Wednesday, jumping up to 78. Not done yet. Coast will get to 80 degrees Thursday and into the weekend still in that mid to upper 70s for the highs. Our mountain areas will be windy, certainly, with that chance of showers Monday and Tuesday. So watch out for those strong, gusty winds. 50-mile-per-hour winds are not out of the question. And for the high desert, partly cloudy skies, mostly clear by Tuesday. The wind's kicking up there as well. And the temps slowly rising up from 67 up to 72 and even 74 for next weekend. So sunshine definitely on the way. Just one little, little bump of some moisture mm -hmm. tomorrow. We Otherwise, can handle it. There you go. We'll be good. All right. Thanks, Danny. Okay. Already known for his skateboarding skills, an English bulldog has now taken up surfing. Check out Bioff the dog as he takes on waves in Lima, Peru. While he can't catch waves on his own, Bioff still enjoys the sport with the guidance of his human owner. Bioff has uh, developed a fan base with thousands of visits to his YouTube and Facebook pages for his skateboarding. So now he's working on his surfing. Yeah, he's a dual threat. Absolutely. <laughs> he used to have a bulldog. My bulldog used to swim. Oh, and did yeah. he surf? I never took him to the ocean. Did he skateboard? He did. Well, by the time I introduced him to the skateboard, a little, little late. He was a little long <laughs> in the tooth. <laughs> so you, what you're saying is you can't teach uh, an old dog. You, I will say the something? vet said, "Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't put him oh. in the pool. Too late. He swims." <laughs> And he's a good swimmer. So good. That, making that smooth good. transition to the Clippers, oh, yeah. that Grammy trip hit a real sour note today. Blake Griffin, get this, folks, he's out minimum two, maximum six weeks due to a staph infection in his elbow. He's flying back to Los Angeles where he's going to have surgery tomorrow. He's had to deal with bursitis in his elbow most of his career. That's why you routinely see him wearing that black protective band on the elbow. As for his team in OKC, Spencer Hawes drawing the start in his place, and he looked pretty good from the outside with Blake gone on the inside. 
In fact, he had 17 points today, but the Thunder outscored the Clippers 35-19 in the third quarter. Kevin Durant launched a three ball there. In fact, he had 29 today. And former Bruin Russell Westbrook, the dagger, that was part of his 19. Clippers dining on humble pie, losing by 23. That Grammy trip ends tomorrow in Dallas. Lakers in Cleveland and a moment of silence for the late Dean Smith, who passed away at the age of 83 last night. Lakers, a decisive underdog. Jordan Clarkson going high off the glass. That's pretty. He had 20. But the Lakers found no love in Ohio. Kevin Love, the former UCLA Bruin, 7 of 8 from behind the three-point line. He was just on fire today and had a uh, season-high 32 points. Lakers fall to 13 and 38 this year. Operation, number one draft pick, looking good. Let's go to Palo Alto where the Cardinal expecting to make easy work against USC. But the Trojans came to life in the second half. Jordan McLaughlin down the lane. He had 18 points today. Later, McLaughlin spies Malik Martin home alone. And suddenly, the Trojans were up by a bucket. But Stanford, just 6 of 23 from behind the arc, hit them when they mattered most. And with that, USC has lost eight of its last eight, falling by eight, 70 to 62. Finally, the Ducks in Tampa this afternoon. Strange play for Ryan Getzlaff. Looks like he has career goal number 200. But wait, they waved it off. They think he redirected it with his skate. Inconclusive, inconclusive, and they go ahead and give it. The problem is they got the goal. The problem is they lost the game, 5-3. So let's go to Jory Rand, our expert. A terp, what's the rule there? Uh, you can redirect it with the skate. You just can't kick it. And it looked like he might have moved his skate towards the goal. So you think he got away I with one? I would have waved that off. Okay, but that's huh. why you're sitting but here. But they rolled it a goal? Roll in and career goal number 200. All right. Okay. Wish it could have come with a win. Thanks, exactly. Kurt. Exactly. New tonight on Eyewitness News at 11 on ABC7. Going into labor and stuck in a snowbank. How a woman and her husband were rescued and made it to the hospital in time. And actor Val Kilmer is released from the hospital after having a medical issue. Those stories and all the late breaking news on Southern California's number one newscast. That's Eyewitness News at 11 on ABC7. Well, coming up next right here on Eyewitness News on LA56. Have you ever imagined what it would be like to live like a hobbit? Well, one Tennessee man has, and now he's making his own Hobbit house a reality. We'll show you after the break. Kurt's just too cool.
Good news for Verizon customers. The company has cut the cost of many of its monthly shared data plans. Verizon announced this week that it's reducing the price of most plans by $10. Existing customers will need to contact Verizon to take advantage of the new pricing. It's also providing more choices for customers who use a lot of data. People aren't the only passengers on the New York City subway. Tons of germs are riding it, too. Scientists from Wheel Cornell Medical College spent more than a year swabbing benches, handrails, seats, and doors in trains and stations. Some samples turned up fragments associated with anthrax and the bubonic plague, although none of them appeared to be alive. A lot of the bacteria discovered was associated with food, pets, particles, and dirt. While researchers say the levels of bacteria found pose no public health problem, city health officials still went on the defensive, calling the study deeply flawed. So who's saying they want more mass train around here? <laughs> <laughs> There's a new king at the box office this weekend. The SpongeBob movie, Sponge Out of Water, takes over the top spot. Patrick, what are you doing? Vandalizing stuff. Isn't that your house? Whoops, Paramount Pictures' Spongebob movie earned $56 million in North America, a huge debut for the animated Nickelodeon big screen transfer. American Sniper falls down to number two, still bringing in more than $24 million. Jupiter Ascending, Seventh Son, and Paddington round out the top five. One Tennessee man goes to great lengths to make his dream house a reality, but it's not exactly fit for everyone. He's building what he calls a tiny hobbit house fit just for him. Randy Jones has been working on this custom-made hobbit house. Check it out. On the outside, eyebrow windows to the ivy-covered roof, and of course, the round door in the inside is just as unique, complete with shelves made from Tennessee pine. Yeah, so fit for an incredible journey at any point. Just Most places just you call that a dollhouse. <laughs> That's where he wants to be. Gandalf is invited, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. wait for that wizard to show up. Thanks for joining us. Bye, we will come. Here on LA 56. LA 56 Weekend Theater is next. I would just use continues at 11 p.m. on ABC 7 anytime. ABC7.com. Have a great night. See you at 11.